Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss a hard problem from lead code. The problem's name is smallest missing genetic value in, in each subtree. This is a hard problem, however, I'll be discussing a pretty easy to understand logic. I hope you are able to understand it well and then implement it on your own. So the problem states that there is a family tree rooted at 0 consisting of n nodes numbered from 0 to n minus 1. You are given a 0 indexed integer array parents where parent i is the parent of the node i. Since the node 0 is the root, Hence, its parent would actually be minus 1. This is a dummy value. Also, there are 10 to the power 5 genetic values, each represent, uh, represented by an integer in the inclusive range of 1 to, uh, 1 to 10 to the power 5. We are also given a 0 indexed array, nums, where nums i is the distinct genetic value for the node i. Uh, distinct actually is an important keyword over here. You will come to know why it's so when we will discuss the solution. But yeah, keep in mind that the values are distinct. Then they are saying that return an array answer or ANS of length n where the ith index is the smallest genetic value that is missing from the subtree rooted at the node i Th then they have given the definition of subtree right so let's move ahead to like understanding from one of the examples so what over here would happen is that for the node 0 let's start at the node 0 right I'll check that in its subtree what is the minimum value minimum positive value that is actually missing so let's check the values that are present in its subtree now 0 is actually the root node, so all the values are present in the subtree, right? So the values 1, 2, 3 and 4 are present in the subtree. So the minimum possible value, minimum value that is absent from the subtree is actually 5. So I will say for 0, the minimum uh, minimum missing value is actually 5. What about this this node now? So for not 1, it will say that in my subtree only 2 is present, right? So the minimum uh, mi missing value is actually 1. And at node 2, I will say that the, in the subtree 3 and 4 are present. So the minimum uh, missing value is actually 1. In for the node 3 also, we will say that okay, uh, its subtree only contains 4. So the minimum missing value is 1 over here. So yeah, that's it. Uh, so the way they have provided us the values are, they will be giving a parent's uh, vector that would define the parent of a current node. Also for the node 0, the parent is minus, I, uh, minus 1. We have already discussed that. Then they will be providing us with the value nums. That is the genetic value of each node. And we have to return an array of length n that would be the output or the minimum missing value for each node cool so with that let's get uh, let's look at the solution okay cool so let's say this is the tree i'm having let's just change the color it's a, okay cool so let's say this is the tree i'm having cool enough now what would happen is that firstly i'll uh, so basic observation is that the minimum value right would be 1 the minimum possible value would be 1 because uh, 0 is not a uh, possible value so minimum possible value would be 1 also we know that all the values are distinct right so since all the values are distinct one can only appear at a single node so let's just assume that I traverse the tree to find out where one is hap uh, present and I found out that one is present over here right Cool. So with that, what I'll say is that now, uh, what are the tr uh, what are the subtrees where one is present as a node? So the subtree would be this particular thing. This is one of the subtree. The other subtree where one is present as an ad as a node would be this, right? The other subtree where one is present as a node would be this. Let's just change the color. Would be this, right? So now, what uh, in other terms, what I can say is that okay, for these three nodes, or these three nodes as a root, one is this node, this node, and this node. The subtrees actually have uh, one present, right? So their value cannot be one. What about the other remaining nodes? So what about these nodes? Let's just color them with blue, maybe. What about these nodes? This node, this node, this node, this node, this node, and this node. So the subtrees which uh, which have this these nodes as a root actually don't have one, right? So inherently their answer is one. So the minimum value that is minimum positive value that is missing, at, uh, like at uh, trees that can be formed by taking these nodes as a root, is actually one. So the answer for them, so the answer for them would actually be one. So answer is one. Answer is one. Answer is one. Answer is one for this as well. Answer is one for this as well. Answer is one for this as well. So, in other terms, in other words, what I can say is that firstly I'll find the value wherever one is present, and then I'll only have to check the uh, check the values of minimum uh, minimum missing for its parents, right? So I'll be checking for this. That is the immediate parent, 
then this is the second parent so i'll only be checking for for its parents only if, say, let's say this tree was even bigger even that that case i would have only checked for these right cool so that generalizes the idea and it makes the problem even simpler so now what would happen is that I, uh, firstly i'll start from this node i'll say i'll run a dfs from this node so as soon as i'll run a dfs i'll go to this node that is to its left and to its right because it only has two children now let's populate some random values to it let's say the value that is present at these nodes are maybe 3 and 4 cool cool so we'll return with the value 3 and 4 over here let's say i have array that is a processed array which contains the values that have been processed so my processed array would now contain 1 3 and 4 so the reason for that is that 1 is present over here 3 is present over here 4 is present over here then at this particular node i'll check which is the minimum possible value minimum uh, positive value that is missing so i'll check that if one is present yes one is present if is two present no two is not present so the minimum missing value over here would be two so answer is equal to root 2 for this i'll go back up again then over here i'll check the same that what is the minimum missing value uh, like uh, firstly i'll do a dfs over here like say, same lo logic needs to be followed i'll go over here then i'll say okay this node was already processed so I, uh, so not, no efforts are required over here i'll come back i'll go over here then i'll say what's the value for this node now let's assume the value over here was uh, maybe 2 right let's assuming that and let's say the value for this node was actually 10 so now my proce processed array would now become i'm erasing this cool so it would now become 1 2 3 4 and 10 now i'll again do the same thing so initially uh, i was at 2 right So now it will say now all uh, two is also found. So I'll move to the next element. There is three. Three is also found. I'll move to the next. That is four. Four is also found. I'll move to the next. That is five. Right. But five is not present. So the minimum missing value over here would be five. Cool. Let's move to the upper element. Now let's populate some other, uh, more values. Let's say this, uh, its value was seven. Right. Let's say this value was six. Its value was nine, and this value was let's say eleven. as soon as uh, as soon as i reach this node i'll again do a dfs right so when i'll do a dfs i'll get to know all the nodes that are present in its subtree so my processed array would uh, be again populated so the new values that would be added to it would be 1 uh, 1 2 3 4 4 and then i'll be having 6 7 9 9 and 11 right 6 7 9 9 9 9 9 cool so that's it yeah So then I'll again come over here. I'll check. Uh, I'll check that if five is present. I'll say no. Five is not present over here as well. So the answer for this is five. Yeah, that's it for the solution. I hope you were able to understand that what we were doing. Now we'll check for the implementation in C plus plus, so that you have a better idea how to code it up. So let's look at the code now. Why is it not zooming out? No worries. Okay. Cool. So firstly, I'm taking n. That is the number of nodes that are present. then i'll be taking a result vector so as we said that we'll firstly assume that uh, one is not present anywhere right so minimum possible value is actually one so i'll assign that then i'll uh, take a uh, uh, like vector that is scene you can name it something else so scene would uh, actually mean that what all what all values i have seen also the uh, like the values are limited to 10 to power uh, 5 so i've taken 10 to power 9 you can actually take 10 to power 6 it would also uh, it would still remain the same after that i have taken the uh, like the node with with the value 1 uh, so i have to calculate at which index it's present then i'm traversing the entire array of values and i'm checking at which value the uh, number 1 is present now there could be two cases now in one of the case it could be that in the entire sub in the entire tree one wasn't even present now if one isn't present anywhere then definitely every uh, ev every sub tree would have or every root which is forming uh, forming a, a root for a sub tree would have an answer one itself because the val minimum value that would be missing would be one itself right so in case my uh, index was not found or the index for uh, one, number 1 was not found so it would still be minus 1 that was the dummy value i provided it initially in that case i'll return the initially populated uh, result that would be populated with all ones right however if if it was found then i'm creating another another vector now the vector i'm creating is children because when i want to traverse or when i want to do a dfs right in that case i go uh, need to go from a node to its children i uh, the right now which the uh, uh, the vector i am having would enable me to go from a 
uh, a ch- child to its parent only but while performing a dfs i want it to be the other way around right i want to go from the root to the children so that is uh, that's what i'm creating over here i hope that's also simple after that what i'm doing is that i'm assigning i as the index so initially i'll be st- uh, starting from the index at which one wa- one was present right so i'll say this and the missing number is actually one i know starting at the same index it should have been two so you can say two it's it's one it would actually not make any difference cool so then what i'll do is that till the time my i is greater than equal to zero now what does this mean so if you remember that the parent of node zero or the root node is actually minus one right so as soon as i reach my uh, node or the parent node it's uh, we can't go further than that right we can't go for its parent so as soon as we we'll try to uh, try to go to its parent the value of node would become minus 1 so we'll know that we need to quit our ro- loop uh, ro- uh, loop right over that after that i'll say that i need to run a dfs from the uh, node i right and i'm passing them other values like children scene and value this is a basic dfs call i hope uh, that is clear and i need not explain that at least let me zoom out a bit cool it's kind of stuck cool enough okay yeah so over here the dfs call is pretty simple and standard i'm just uh, setting the scene value equal to 1 and then i'm going to its children and i'm processing it further so one, uh, also over here one thing you can say is that when i'm uh, like making the scene value equal to 1 technically i'm getting to know that what all values are present in its uh, children right so standing at a certain index or at just a certain parent now once i have performed the dfs i have all the values that would be available in, in its children right then i'll say if my uh, missing number that initially is 2 right if my missing number is present then i need to need to increment it right so i'll keep incrementing it till the time i uh, i don't get a value that is not present in its subtree as soon as that happens i'll get out of this while loop i'll incre- uh, i'll uh, return, uh, write that particular value into the result of that node right and then i'll update my parent so i need to go to the parent of the current node so i'll say my node now is the parent node i'll keep performing uh, this as said that i'll keep performing it until i reach a value that that is minus 1 that would be the parent of the root node that would be invalid node actually after that that's done i'll uh, quit the loop and i'll return the result cool so that's it for the video i hope you like the solution let me know if you, if you still have any doubts more than video to help you out always cool guys thanks for watching the video bye bye